a guy named Captain Cook allegedly went around this and it's about 60,000 miles in circumference and it took him about three and a half to four years to do so. And they discredited him by saying that he got lost in some Pacific Ocean. You are hey, what's up, bud? A moron. I, I'm a what? A moron. Okay, thanks, man. Oh, no, 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 no problem. And that's You're that's yeah. So are you calling me an idiot? I would never. Well, so be outright. So being called a moron by an idiot is a problem. Did you? It's good to get comp. Could I ask you a question? Did you see my sign here? I did, yeah. What did what did my sign say here? Something about facts. Yeah, does free speech require facts? No. No, you're Okay. So why are you calling me a moron? Am I not uh, am I not allowed to oh, what do you know? That's <laughs> all Here we are, back after it. University of Minnesota, day after the Twins just got swept under the flat earth by the Yankees. So we have some residual good weather because the Yankees were in town just in case they won yesterday. The Twins would have played today. It was really nice out yesterday. Until later on in the day they started spraying. Now they're spraying right now. A lot of haze in the air, a lot of geoengineering going on because the Midwest is supposed to get a pretty hefty snowstorm, allegedly, this weekend, first snow of the year, so it looks like they're just prepping the sky for whatever it is that they do up there, because that's how they feel they have to have control over everything. If your government is not controlling the weather, controlling your food and making sure everything is ship shape for its citizens, they are not doing their due diligence. If they're not conspiring, hiding things from them, keeping their citizens at a much, much lower totem pole line, I guess you could say, social status, financial status then they're not doing their due diligence. What do you think about that? You know, I mean, your government should be doing all these things. Because if you were in power, you would think that you would also be doing the same thing. But you have such a great moral code, and you try to project that onto other people that you've never met before, and you think everything's supposed to be okay. Until 20, 30 years later, those conspiracy theories, which were all made fun of, come out to be true. Then it has been so long and everyone has forgotten, they're just even more in a docile state. So the squeaky wheel gets the grease, and we're going to try to oil up some of these hamster wheels in these students' minds, because clearly nobody can at least WD-40 these hinges on these doors over here, which is just... It's like one of those things now where it should be a staple for this area. Oh yeah, you know that building with the squeaky doors? Oh yeah, I know that building. So we'll try to create some conversations, see what we can muster up. Or just stand here for the next couple of hours. But people will figure out why I'm here. And then they can make a choice. And that's what it's all about. Because you can't make a choice if you don't have anything to choose from. At least we can give them that. It is quite brisk out today. So, you know, we'll just try to have to 
deal with that as the day goes. Not surprisingly, the wind is coming from the south, so it's going to combine with some of that Canadian air, I'm sure, as the week progresses and develop into shutting the whole state down because it's been six feet of snow. I really honestly don't know what would be able to shut down Minnesota in terms of, of snow. We are relentless. Nothing can stop us, except for the uh, New York Yankees. But the Minnesota Vikings have no problem playing against New York teams. Considering the NFL is the more popular sport here in this country, everybody just has some problem with them losing to the Yankees all the time. And if you're a Minnesota born and raised and you're a Yankee fan, you're mainstream. You're a mainstreamer. Everything the government and everything they push, you're all about. You buy their t-shirts. You defend them. You come up to me with this sense about you that you have to defend this place. I did see this is interesting. Hail Satan, campus atheists, skeptics, and humanists movie screening this Thursday at 7 to 9. It's a documentary. Is it? Is that what it is? So I'm not sure if you've heard it, seen it, or if it's come across your eyes and your YouTube suggestions or maybe even like subscriptions because some people have mirrored this video regarding November 3rd and Seattle and whatnot. You know, it's interesting that people keep saying, you know, none of these things have happened yet. So once one of these things happen, I'll believe it. Well, you know, if you really break that down, November 3rd, calling it something that it might not be something, isn't in and itself, I guess, wrong. Because if there was something that was planned and now it's being exposed, it most likely won't happen, right? So then it won't happen. So then maybe it's whatever it's doing, it's done its job. And so when the things do happen on days, and then you look back at some of the predictor programming through TV and movies and whatnot, you'll look back and be like, oh, how come I didn't notice this before? We should have seen this coming. But I thought you did see it coming. I, I thought September 23rd was the, the time. You know, I thought November 3rd was that time that you saw all the puzzle pieces from a million miles away. You know, I thought that's why you made this video, is because it was supposed to happen and it didn't. Well, maybe it didn't happen because, you know, either A, it wasn't ever going to happen, or B, it got exposed. And so isn't that the whole point? Is to expose the works so that nothing happens. But if nothing happens, then you're not going to take any of these videos as credible. You see the circle that you get yourself into? We start sharing this information and then nothing happens and then people are like, well, where's this coming? Where's this thing that you keep saying? And so on and so on. And then you have to remind them, well, remember that time that this guy said that it was going to rain and it never had rained before? Yeah, you know, remember that time? Remember he was saying it for like 20 years in this one city? 
Then he left, and he never said it again in that city for 20 years, and then 100 years later, it, it happened. Like, it doesn't mean that just because things are being talked about right now that these things won't happen. It just means that these, these times will be then delayed. You know, maybe more people have to wake up. You know, that's something to consider. You know, if, if things just happened right now and none of these people hear about this concept or go down these extra curricular ideas and everything just hits the fan right away, right now, you know, where's the opportunity for a lot of these students, you know, and a lot of these people? And that's where I think, like, just coming out here and standing here and then having them walk by, see Flat Earth, and they make a choice right there because they see somebody in the Matrix. Like, we're plugged in right now. I mean, we were plugged in last night. I mean, we were at the Yankees Twins game, for crying out loud. You know, playoff baseball. So we can't just pull the plug and then like, oh, no, oh, they lost. They didn't. They they weren't woke up to flat Earth. I just don't think it's going to happen like that. I still think everything like works as um, uh, what the Fabian Society would say. Not sure if you know or are familiar with the Fabian Society, but, you know, they work on 100, 200 year plans. You know, they're very incremental. They're very, it's very small. Like a turtle. That's their mascot. <laughs> like, no joke. For the Fabian Society now is a turtle. And it's something like when we strike, we strike hard, you know, because it's almost like, we have all this momentum built up behind us for a hundred years of our plan. And when our plan finally gets to that point where we can start a new chapter, you'll know that we're starting a new chapter, you know? You'll know. And for sure, 9-11 could be one of those times. Gulf of Tonkin type stuff. Randy's hook could be one of those times. So a lot of these different scenarios are just kind of incremental and work up to a larger scenario. Whereas if you didn't have these little incremental updates, then, you know, you wouldn't really see the bigger picture. So I would obliterate your mind like stardust, my friend. Go paint something. Go find a canvas. And really, like, again, the reason why I bring the religious aspect up so much when I talk is because really, like, what a lot of these people are believing is somebody else's testimony, somebody else's word, another book that they read from a hundred years ago. You know, these textbooks, they're Bibles. Those are Bible scriptures in the sense of science. And much like Christianity being polluted with uh, various idealisms and, you know, various ways that uh, you can communicate with God or in Scientology, even those types of branching off of where we come from and why we're here, then, you know, that's what science is. What's up? Hello. How we doing? Pretty good. Right on. You think the Earth is flat? Oh, uh, like you think the Earth is a ball? I don't know. I've never seen it from space. Okay, fair enough to say. Um, what? What? Uh, I got a YouTube channel. Maybe you swing by and check it out. What? Uh, what worldview do you have then? Uh, I don't really know. I don't. I question a lot of things that you know. I, I don't think I have all the answers, so I don't think. I just because I believe something, I don't think that makes it true. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Like, yeah. What? I can't, uh, I, think I can't prove myself. I mean, like, take it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. If the Earth were uh, level and non-rotating plane, what would it look like to you? What? 
Has that ever crossed your mind? I have no idea. Like thinking about it, what it looks like? What if it just, um, like one of these cement squares and you were in the middle of it? Okay. And you were just like point zero and a thousand zeros that small. And it just was like level and flat. What could it be that? And just go on infinitely from, could it go on infinitely from your perspective? You know, like, do you, um, what do you, what do you think about like a creator? Does that ever cross your mind? Yeah, I mean, I'm a Christian, but I mean, I don't, I'm not really sure. I I've never been in space, so I wouldn't know about what they're like. Mm -hmm. But, uh, a good, good job. I mean, I, I always think it's funny when uh, I point it, like, it's not funny, but I mean, like, I, I have a huge amount of respect for people who come out here and, like, challenge or just anything the university says. I mean, so. I'm, yeah, hey, thanks I'm a lot, man. I congratulate you on that, even though yeah. I, Fair I don't enough, necessarily man. believe the earth is flat, but I'm not saying it's not a possibility. I'm just saying uh, it's good of you to come out here and then make people question things. Thanks, man. A yeah. lot of times they tell you not to question things. They're yeah. Like, oh, this is how things are. So I'm like, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to sound condescending. Yeah, you're fine. Like, I, I don't believe the no earth is flat, but I mean, I've never been in space, so I can't really prove it. I haven't either. One way or yeah, right. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, what about the term globe denial? Like, I'm a globe denialist. You know? I've never heard that term before. Yeah. Or like, uh, uh, globe agnostic, earth agnostic. I mean, look, just, you can believe what, like, what, what you want, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna tell you what to believe. Sure. Do you think that there's any, like, way that we could come to some reason on natural law, though? You know, like some things that are here on Earth that are just natural no, that we know of. I have no idea. I mean, that stuff's above my head anyway. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely check out your YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. Take care. It's like I've, I've never heard that no, point of view before. Mm. But, I mean, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, it's, it's definitely good that you're making people question things. You know? Yeah. Why not? Right. I mean, that's how we. You know, that's how we grow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, All right. Take care. One thing interesting I found out about Minnesota recently is that chalk on sidewalks is not considered vandalism. You can actually use chalk to share your, uh, your opinions, facts, ideas, write it right on the ground. So I was thinking about buying some spray chalk. And using like a transparency of the AE map or whatever, but that would be fun. So, man. So I thought that would be fun. Hey, you mind? Hey, what's up? You mind if I just? Yeah, if you take some of my information. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. No worries, man. Take care. Amen. Cheers. Right on, brother. Spread the good word. Mm. Well, whatever that means. I'm usually pretty careful to acknowledge those who raise their hand and say, ah, flat earth, thumbs up. You know, that sarcasm, you can hear it in the air. You, you know, when you're here, you might not be able to see it too much on video, but when you're here... And you see people walk by and you just feel them. Even if they're just walking by. Even when I'm talking to somebody and they walk by and they just shout out flat earth or whatever. You know, I don't even acknowledge that. I don't say, oh, they're a flat earther. I don't assume that. You will know them by their works. Okay? That's why you ask people who say, yeah, I'm in a flat earth. Oh, okay. Okay. What were some what were some of the bigger points that allowed you to you know get on that path? Like what is it that that drew you in? You know, and really like listen to the, what they have to say. Cuz they could be just be trolling you and you're just I don't know, like you would figure like some you know people who 
would identify themselves as flat earthers would be a little bit more cautious to people who spout out the mouth like that. But I see people on videos responding to others who say they're flat earthers and they like shake their hand and they want to buy them a meal. I just... It's like one of the, it's like a Jehovah Witness who never tells you that they're a Jehovah Witness until you bring them into your house. And you're like, oh yeah, so you know, how'd you come to know the Lord? Oh well, you know, John Smith and such and such. What? You know, it's, it's situations like that. You know, you so you really gotta just. I mean, I have to be more cautious. Just like that guy who. Uh, you know, trolled me at the game. You know, like, you don't look like you're here for, to watch the game, sir. <laughs> you know, it's like one of those. But uh, you know, you don't have to say that to him. You just know. You can tell that he was sent there, or maybe like he's so NPC'd and plugged into this place that, you know, he sees me going out and. I took advantage of the, you know, Twins game yesterday in the nice weather, and I went out to the game. So it's not a secret that I, you know, go to these higher level sporting events here in town. But these are the types of people that sit at home, and they get so upset. They get triggered when they see me out here talking to these students about an alternative cosmology and about where we come from. An alternative way of how we got to where we're at right now as human beings. And the heliocentric model and evolution and all that garbage, outer space stuff, needs to be burnt. That idea needs to be burnt away and never reintroduced into the public mind again. And anybody that does try to reintroduce that again, you put them on a ship and you put them on their own island and let them have at it. You know, you want to teach this? Okay, you can go teach that over here on this continent. That's what you want to do. I'm not going to share that here. Secrets with the backpack. And that's fine if people want to come out and spend their time hanging out with me. That's why it, I invited him down to gate three to see how he could handle all the people around me and just kind of see what he would say. And I turned it into something that was fun, you know, good cop, bad cop. I mean, if he actually thought he was going to come out there and like change my mind about something or even plant a seed of doubt, in my mind, it's not going to work. Unfortunately, there are some weak, weak-minded sheep at sporting events. They're they're really their defenses are really really down, and so they could fall prey to the flies that were coming out of his mouth at that game. But it's not going to work on me. So I think that's why we're back here today. Just keep pressing in. You know, that's how we keep showing this place that there is no fear. We should not have any fear. And everything is a choice. Just remember that. You have a choice. Okay, so when you're told you have to do something, you still have a choice. You might have to sacrifice something. You know, but it doesn't mean that you're forced into doing something.
دانش آموزان عزیز صبح بخیر این مدیرتون است که صحبت میکنه زیاد وقت کلاستون رو نمیگیرم فقط میخوام اعلام کنم که از امروز تغییراتی در دروس شما رخ خواهد داد معلمین جرامی این تغییرات رو به توجهتان میرسانند درخواست من از همه شما عزیزان این است که با هوشیاری آموزش های معلم خود را آویزه گوش کنید مطمئن هستم که شما هم برای خود و هم برای کل مدرسه افتخار آفرین خواهید با تشکر ساکت نظم کلاس حفظ کنیم این درس اول امروزه دو به علاوه دو مساوی پنج حالا تکرار کنیم دو با دو میشه پنج دو با دو چند میشه؟ پنج میشه بلندتر دو با دو چند میشه؟ پنج میشه بلندتر چند میشه؟ تکرار کنیم دو با دو چند میشه؟ میشه. آقا اجازه مگه دو با دو چهار نمیشه من دارم به تو میگم دو با دو پنج میشه پس چه سوال نیست فهمیدی؟ آقا فقط فکر کردیم که فکر نکن نمیخواد فکر کنی دو با دو پنج میشه حالا بشین حرف نزن دفتراتون رو باز کنین و بنویسین دو به علاوه دو آقا اجازه دو به علاوه دو میشه چهار وقتی همه چی چهار میشه چطوری ممکنه این به پنج بشه؟ اصلا کی به تو چیز افزدن داد؟ به چه حقیقی منزی سوال میبری؟ آقا آقا فقط میخواستم بگم دو با دو پنج میشه تکرار کن ولی آقا روی تخت تکرار کن دو برابی دو رو به چهار همه تو میرین که چهار میشه تخت رو نگاه کن تو هم که میرین چهار میشه شو چیزی نمیگی سکوت چون نخور تو برگردم چکشه بابا این میخوای همه اونجا در سر بندازی خیلی از همیش کردم میاد پدرش رو در میاره این دانش آموز فکر کنه از همه بهتر میدونه خیلی روش زیاده بگو بینم پسر دو بوده چه میشه؟ آقا اجازه چه میشه آقا شنیدی؟ باورتون میشه؟ این دانش آموزان از ممتاز ترین دانش آموزان مدرسه هم الگوی این مدرسه هم یه ذره از اینو یاد بگیریم بگیم اینا دو بوده چند میشه؟ آقا اجازه پنگ میشه آقا آفرین بینجا پسر حالا حاصل جمع جمع میشه جواب سعیده بنویس این آخرین فرصته خب کس دیگه هم هست که درس امروز رو نفهمیده باشه نگاه کن این بریم بیرون
دفتراتون رو باز کنه بنویسین دو به علاوه دو مساوی پنج همینطور که بنویسین تکرار کنین دو با دو چند میشه؟ پنج میشه چند میشه؟ پنج میشه بلندتر چند میشه؟ پنج میشه بلندتر چند میشه؟ چند میشه؟ پنج میشه چند میشه؟ پنج میشه دو با دو پنج میشه تکرار Hey, what's up? Uh, not much. What you doing? Yeah, just hanging out. Looks like you're no, just looking around. Yeah. We're just bored. Just yeah. just like a... The earth is flat. Yeah, why not? Could it be? Absolutely. I mean, is it really possible? Like, with what you were taught as a child, thinking about it? Well, we were taught as a child that it wasn't flat, so like... Right. So, but I mean, with all, like, what you feel... you've been brought to right now at this moment, mm -hmm. could you bet her life that the Earth is a ball on the bending of space-time and outer space? I don't think I'd want bet my life on anything. That's fair. Yeah, fair enough, right? But I do have students that would say that they would bet their friend's life, mm -hmm. that yeah. they're 100% sure that science would not lie to them about where they live. Yeah, well, if I was in the business of betting lives, I would say, <laughs> uh, Science could have lied to us for sure. Yeah, and what aspect though? I don't though? think it did though. But what, a, what, what, in what way, like knowing nine planets, you know, bending of space time, spinning yeah. at a twenty-three point four degree tilt, of which you've never seen before, sure. and any time that they show you a picture of your globe Earth, it's never tilted. So it's just something to think about. You know, the only time you ever see a globe tilted is like the actual globe, physical globe on somebody's desk. Mm -hmm. But when you get a globe image shown to you by mainstream media, mm -hmm. you never see it tilted. Right. Sure. Something to think about, you sure. know. Sure. So, but I mean, if you were to convey to me, like, why the Earth is a ball, what could you two come up with? Like, I think the biggest thing for me is the sun. Okay. Yeah, because if the Earth were flat, I think it would make more sense to me. To have us like the sun position in the sky would be the same all year round. Okay. Like from day to night, mm -hmm. instead of like, you know what I'm talking about? Like when it's in the winter, it only comes up a little bit. That would make sense for, for right. a globe because a flatter the sun would have to be in a really weird rotation. I don't know how that would work. Yeah. How about you? You got one? No, no, no. no I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Still up, yeah, that's good. I've been told good by a majority to of people that it's a ball, and until a majority of people tell me it isn't, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I was laughing at one of my friends because we were watching Sherlock Holmes, and he said, um, he said, well, Watson was like, you don't care whether the earth goes around the sun, or the sun goes around the earth, and he was like, it doesn't make an ounce of difference to me and my life's work. And some, pe some people over and started laughing because of that weep, I bet. Mm. Nice. Yeah. That's what I'm right on. Could I, like, maybe, like, test you a little bit and say, if the earth were flat, Is it like a disc floating in outer space? Wait, what would the alternative be? Yeah. Well, I mean, can we just start there, though, real quick? Just if, if the Earth... Because she was saying... Right. Do you know how far the sun is away from the Earth? Um, isn't something like... Stab, like, 23 million miles, something like that? Times that by, like, four. Okay. Yeah, so okay. it's like 93 million miles away. 93, okay. Yeah, so... Like, what most people do is they just replace a ball with a disc floating in outer space, and outer space is still real. So what if, just, you know, hypothetically, that um, the Earth were like the square cement that you're standing on, and you were placed in the middle, and you were microscopic? In your lifetime, or your family's lifetime, or your next family's lifetime, could you ever even get to the edge of what you think is the edge of the Earth? Definitely. So from your perspective, it would appear to be infinite, sure. but it could have measurements to it. Sure. Is that possible? Okay, so like, just to help kind of further your thought along a little bit, what if 
you know, this was some kind of idea. Mm -hmm. So, the point of this is the oceans and everything lay mm -hmm. level and flat. Just like that cement piece behind you. Mm -hmm. So it's level and flat, and the sun is local and smaller. Interesting. So it's not actually... Smaller than what we think of? Okay. Yeah, smaller than what we're taught. So could you... See, I mean, I'm just trying to, I'm like... explain why people fly over the poles. I'm just trying to get you, like, to, to, to think, and I, this isn't a fact, but yeah. what if the sun were 20 to 100 miles from the surface of the Earth? And it was 70 miles in diameter. That kind of ruins my idea of photosynthesis. Well, it does the sun works in the same way. That's like that's the idea is like we're taught something and then we use that same construct of what we're taught and we try to apply it to a different yeah. ideology. But and if it were that small, would it really have enough like energy to like to fuel all photosynthesis or is it maybe that we don't understand photosynthesis? Because of Bigger, you'd need a bigger sun than that. No, no, no. It'd be less energy, but it'd be closer. So it's, it, this is what it's doing. So, okay. see where California is there? Mm -hmm. And as the sun traverses, it continues to go around like this. Yeah, that's, that, would make, that would make sense. Yeah, so the North Pole's in the center, and the North Pole and the sun and the moon and all these two, these three objects have a relationship with each other. Yeah. So as it becomes winter out, the sun is always in the southern horizon. Right. Is that fair enough to say? So in June, in July... Um, the sun is almost directly above us, right, right? Right. And in the winter time, in January, it's almost like on the lower part of the horizon. Okay. Right. So that would be this perspective. Um, and then, so what the sun is doing is it's just traveling further away from your perspective, at the same height, still parallel to the ground. Right. Just as if you're walking away from these lamp posts, they're not physically getting smaller. You're just traveling further away from them. And then there's a vanishing point of convergence with the ground meeting the sky. And so that's the sun just going further away from your perspective. So I guess my question would be, like, at what point do you think science is lying to you? And at what point do you think it's not lying to you? Because, like, obviously if you think it's a disk, you would say then science is wrong. But if you think that photosynthesis and everything still works in the same way, then you would say that science is right. So, like, where do you draw the line? Yeah, I think, well, I think first off, science right now is becoming a religion. Where a lot of a lot of people are basing a lot of their worldview on other people's opinions and testimony, mm -hmm. second and third party, and then they haven't verified these things themselves, and that's what science is. So science is uh, observation, demonstration, and being able to repeat it. Right. So you can verify things like photosynthesis works, but you can't ver verify things. Like yeah. And so what if what if it's more along the lines of just being maybe misled and uninformed and tradition. Okay. Have you ever heard the traditional story that, um, you know, the, the, the daughter comes up to the mom and says, Mom, why are you splitting that roast in half? Okay. And then the, the mom would say, well, this is what my mom did. And so this is what I do. But she never was told about the story that um, her mom's mom was cut, like back in the 20s, right, was cutting the roast because her pan was only so big it would only fit if two pieces were separate. So it's not actually the best way to do it, it's just the way she did it. It's just the way, yeah. And she just wasn't taught, she didn't have a bigger pan. If she was given a bigger pan, she would put the whole roast on the whole pan. But she cut it in half because the one pan wouldn't fit at all. So is it possible that we here at this university and just in general for the mainstream, it's just tradition? Yeah, definitely. And so now with Flat Earth, what it's allowing people to do as a critically thinking society is challenge those things that we think are true because science says so. Okay, so you're not necessarily arguing that science is wrong, you're just arguing that science could be. Yeah, I'm saying that, you know, are you spiritual people? Yes. Okay, so, okay, but you're familiar with like Catholic Church, Mormons, and so yeah, on and yeah, so on, yeah, right? Yeah. So these are other sects of the foundational aspect of Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I, you know, God forbid, right, took your skateboard, of which I don't know how to use, which I commend you for using a push skateboard, all these posers walking around with these electric scooters. They're more efficient. That's cheating. Fair enough. Um, so I get on it, and I, and I try to skateboard, and I break my arm. Okay, right? Yeah. Science can fix me. Right. Okay? But science can't verify that black holes exist. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, so like, 
just um, what I'm trying to convey is like step back a little bit and say which part of science is this true and I can in my heart know that it could be true if I don't even have to verify that you know Australia exists even though I've never been there before right I don't necessarily have to verify that I can with me my own personal opinion I can I can confidently say at least there's people who talk like Australians and they can verify Australia exists so I can go with that but if somebody comes back with a fantastical story of walking on the moon and I can't do it myself with the resources that I have even if all three of us pooled all of our money together and we got our families to help and we still can't do it that's what I'm saying I'm a little confused with that because if mm-hmm. someone came back with some new accent, you know, yeah. and said it's a moon accent, it's not like you would believe that's a thing, right? So I'm a little confused where you can say Australia just, like, definitely exists because of testimonial evidence, but mm-hmm. the moon doesn't exist because of testimonial evidence. I'm saying landing on the moon. Okay. Because there's a, there's a lot of things that go into landing on the moon, is there not? Right. Okay, so if I had $5,000, yeah. could I not go to Australia? Let's say this person says that they had $5,000 and went to and it was just like a quick plane ride and out of But we both, all three of us know that's kind of a ludicrous statement. Well, we don't know that for sure, though. Because, I mean, saying Come on, the no. I'm trying to be intellectually honest with you. Okay. And I think that, I don't think, I think that you're trying to, you're trying to get something out of this conversation that isn't going to go anywhere. Um, I think if there's more than a few eyewitnesses, or you personally know the eyewitnesses, and it's been like, and it's something that you could personally experience very probably if you wanted to. It's more believable than if it only a few people. Like black holes. Only a few scientists could explain to you what it means. And nobody's actually seen one in person. Mm. It's, you're skeptical. About yeah, that's kind of the thing, right? I mean, I, and, and um, I'm not saying like continual verbal testimony makes things true because you know everybody here can believe yeah right exactly so and and those particular people who claim black holes are real or people who walked on the moon and whatnot you know you got to try to like step back and be like okay why is it that you're not teaching everybody else how to do this also like what's the big secret you know like why not share this information and there is a piety that gets into in a person's mind when they're in the public education system because they do feel like they're kind of like you know giants looking over grasshoppers in a way because they have this intellectual right. education right, right. that they can like, like subvert over other people like it's a superiority it's yeah i feel like it can be okay. you know have you ever, with some people have you ever been in a plane flying like thirty thousand feet and seeing like the horizon yeah, that's one of those things where, like, I think we're taught that our whole life, mm-hmm. and we think we see something that's really not there. But like, how would you explain, like, would you say it's a, like, trick of the atmosphere, the curvature of the Earth, like, from um, airplanes? Well, your eyes kind of see in, like, that sense, where, like, we see them like that. Um, you're, you're really not high enough to see what they would consider curvature. Are you familiar with who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Okay, he's he's a famous um, astrophysicist type of guy, and he's an actor too. Just heads up. <laughs> um, but he claimed on vid- on video that the Felix Bumgarner jump at 125,000 feet at that height, which is 20 to 25 miles, you can't see curvature. Okay. So you agree with or you disagree? With I totally agree with that because the math, when you look at it honestly, about what the ball Earth is supposed to be measured out to. You know, then you can come up with an equation that works within the first couple hundred miles for a, a human being. Sure. An observation of eight inches per mile squared. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying curvature this way. I'm saying curvatures, and I think I'd be able to see farther through this. Computer. No, you totally can see farther. And what's happening is like you've done a hula hoop before, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what's happening is that you at, at, at your observer height, you probably are almost six feet, I'm sure. Okay, yeah. So if you're that tall and you're in the middle of you know, the hula hoop, that's your circle of sight, is the edge of the hula hoop. And the higher that you get in elevation, that hula hoop is going to start to expand out more. And so the the horizon is still alleged. The horizon can't be 100% measured because of the parquelets in the air. You would see, be able to see farther, but you're not going to see curvature from, uh, you know, an airplane because you can't see it at a high altitude height of 20 miles. So it's just something like we're, we're, 
we're programmed to think that we live on a ball earth. So when we get to that height of 35,000 feet, we believe that we're seeing something that's really not there. So, yeah, so you personally, are you in the camp of it's a flat earth or are you in the camp of like, we just can't trust that it's not a flat earth? Um, I mean, I'm pretty confident that it's level and flat. Yeah, I mean, in my in my heart and having done this for over three years and talking about this openly in public, I've gotten to the point where I know water lays level and flat when it's contained. It lays level and flat. And the only word magic anybody could ever put on me to try to get me to change, which isn't going to work, and they've tried. They sent a troll out to me at the game last night. So, yeah. I, um, yeah, you can check it out. I'll put it out this weekend. I got a YouTube channel. <laughs> and um, and so I was um, I was just going to say, like, um, <clears throat> not to rewind, because I kind of forgot what I was going to say, but... Um, Your personal evidence in... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, water laying level and flat gravity is the excuse that water can bend and create a sphere. But if I've never seen the ball Earth from outer space... And they say, well, the water, the water that's here isn't enough water for you to observe it to curve. Mm -hmm. Then that's not an observation that I can say confidently that water bends to make a sphere. Yeah, that's fair. So I have to be high enough out away from the surface of the Earth, which is about 2,500 to 3,000 miles, right. using the, that type of math to understand the cir circumference and diameter. And you, you wouldn't see the Earth curving per se, you would be at the center point of the Earth, and it would continue to fade away and turn into a disc yeah. shape, you know? So, How would you explain the South Pole and Antarctica? So the idea is that there may or may not be a wall of ice, 60,000 miles in circumference, holding all the water in around, here. around the Earth. And so, you know, that would be this concept right here. You know, again, where you have the edge where the white is, mm -hmm. that would be considered the Antarctic ice wall. Um, another concept that, you know, I kind of um, look into is the Earth. The Earth, no, it's mine. I dropped it. The Earth um, having, you know, more land and more continents that we're just unawares of. Because they're really not obligated to tell us, like, where more land is. When people say they went... Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, so here's America, right? Mm -hmm. Australia, South America, you know, mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So there's a man named Admiral Byrd okay. who claims to have seen more land beyond this, um, <laughs> what people yeah. would consider Antarctica. Okay. Okay. So like there's a crevasse out here. It's just an ice field. Yeah. yeah. It's like an ice shelf. So do you believe in space flight then? Or do I don't know. Okay. No, because scientifically, like, you can't have outer space. No, that, that's, that lines up with your view, but, like, when when they talk about NASA and all that stuff, then what do you, like, think yeah. is really going on? There? So, what I honestly think is going on is when they say outer space, mm -hmm. they mean more land horizontally out outer space. But, so when they talk about, like, leading expeditions, you mean that they talk about leading expeditions to... Other lands, yeah, okay. other continents, yeah, so... Like, um, think about it like this, and I'm not saying that this is 100%, but, you know, if, if you find out, like, where the sun is right now, directly over something, you could kind of find out, like, if you want to, find out exactly where the sun is, because it's tangible, it's here on Earth, and we could go to where it would be directly above you. So the lights in the sky, what if you were to see one of the lights in the sky and try to traverse towards it, to where it's directly above you? You know, so then would that mean that those lights in the sky show us where more land is. So, but then why would the sun, why would the stars in the sun go in a circular? Because when the sun rises, it doesn't rise from there to there, it rises from there to there. Yeah, it's just our circle of sight and how we see things yeah. as humans. But if, this, if the sun doesn't like, why would there even be a, like, why would it seem to come up? It was just going around. Yeah, it, I have a video on a couple videos ago where somebody is showing the sun as it continues to travel further away and it actually fades into the sky. So it actually like literally um, uh, disperses itself into the, the sky and like and then, then it disappears. So it, the sun is at a particular height, just like the top of that lamppost is, and it's always at that height and it's always just traveling further away from you. It's not the Earth so rotation. Like it's closer to the ground, then? It is closer yeah. to the ground than 93 million miles, right? No, I mean, 
I mean, so... Yeah, it does. It's just going farther away. Yeah, and, and as it travels further away from you, it gets lower in the horizon from your perspective, and the water vapor and the molecules and the particles in the sky continue to make that sun the same size. So it's not going to angularly get smaller. Right. The, the water vapor in the air make it stay up. Yeah, so. I just have one more question. So, <laughs> the, so you mentioned that like, flat earthers think of it like a disc, right? And no, 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 no. Oh. No. So I showed you that because that's what okay. people think a flat earther thinks. Oh, I see. And, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, my question was that my perception of people like, who thought it was flat thought mm -hmm. it was actually like a semi-sphere where it's like a disc on top and then like... Like a basin, like a kind of thing on the bottom? Yeah. Like, what is... Outer, what is so, incorrect? just me, my opinion, and I feel strongly that other people would agree with me, yeah. is that outer space does not exist, okay? Right. So there's no edge to get to, there's no falling off or anything like that. It's just bigger than what we're told. So we can't, here as civilians, taxpaying lower class citizens, can't go and explore those nice. areas, you know? So whether it looks like a snow globe and it's a dome above us mm -hmm. and it's just more land that we just can't traverse to and the ice wall is like keeping all the water in or whatever, or it's like I was saying earlier, like this, you know, shell of this um, cement square where it's just so large that we, it's immeasurable to our perspective. Okay, so, yeah. but there's really no way to like know for sure is what you're saying. Like, I think there's a way that we can know. We just, yeah, I don't have a billion dollars, you know, cool. so, yeah. So hopefully it just helps you, you know, think outside the box a little bit and explore your yeah, new thoughts. Kind of like understand your perspective that I really yeah. Yeah, why not, right? Yeah. yeah. Take care. Thanks for stopping. Yeah. Enjoy your day. Bye. Bye.